Welcome to C-Sharp for Crestron Programming. Bringing in traditional IR devices to C-Sharp for Crestron is very simple. We can load the IR file and even include it in the compiled program, just like how a simple program does. But we need to add a library to our program first. The complete program we have here is available for download with this lesson. After starting a new .NET Framework library and adding in the Crestron NuGet packages, we need to add a using statement to the top of our program. We want Crestron Simple Sharp Pro General I.O. While we are here, also add in the Crestron Simple Sharp Crestron I.O. The keypad's using statement is for the keypad input in this example. If you do not have a CrestNet keypad, you can remove the keypad code and replace it with touch panel code. See the touch panel video for details. Once we have our using statement in place, we can now make out containers. First, we want a generic IR output port. But what if the processor we are using does not have IR, but we still want to use IR? We can add a container for a Sen IO IR 104 here as well and add code to detect if we have local IR ports, and if not, try a different device. The IR driver file can live anywhere you want and simply point your code to its location. In this example, we're gonna do what Simple Windows does and wrap up their file inside the compiled program zip file to be transferred as an all-in-one package. To do this easily, we're going to leverage Visual Studio's ability to add other files to a project. Right-click on your solution. We are going to go to Add Existing Item. Find your IR file. Once their IR file is in your solution, click on the IR file, and in the Properties pane, select the Copy to Output to be copied always. This IR file will now always be copied to the build folder and then wrapped up in the file to be sent to the processor when a program is loaded. We now need to tell the program where this file is. Using string format, let's create the full path to the IR file. If you wanted to load the file elsewhere, you would specify that path here. To make our program more universal, we're going to check to see if we support IR out on this processor by using the supports IR out property. If it does, we can register the port, check if we are able to register the port, and then assign it to our container. Notice we are not instantiating the port like other hardware. Built-in ports are already instantiated, and we only have to perform an assignment to use them. If it does not support built-in IR outputs, then we need to add our SenIO IR104 and register it. We check if registration was successful and finally assign its IR port to our container. This IR port did not have to be instantiated because it was created when we instantiated the hardware that contains it. Using a container for our IR port allows us not to worry if it was an internal port or an external port on another device. This way, my code in the rest of the program does not care where the port exists, and I do not have to manage that elsewhere in my code. I added in a flag variable to detect if we were successful at assigning an IR port to our container. We can load the IR file to it and have a functioning IR transmitter. If we do not have a port, load that IR driver we specified using the path variable we created earlier. Our IR device is now complete and ready to be used. But what commands does it support? That depends on the person that learned the file and if they named them properly. We can list out all of the commands and the standard commands by using a for each. Let's create a for each that will list the commands that are standard and print them to console. There we create a for each that lists all the commands as well. This will allow us to look inside the IR file and see what's inside it for available commands and how we access those commands. 
Finally, last thing we're going to do is send IR commands when the button presses occur. There are three modes of operation for sending an IR command. Press, release, and press and release with a pulse time. Separate press and release are useful for those IR commands that need to repeat like volume, channel, and directional controls that a user typically holds down to repeat fire for scrolling. Press and release with a pulse time are typically used for transport controls, number pads, and power buttons if the power button does not have a press and hold requirement. One thing to be very aware of here, the command you call in these methods must match exactly to what they are named in the IR file. They will not function and can throw exceptions if they do not match exactly. This can create a challenge to programming if the IR files you are using do not follow naming standards for commands. We can now compile and upload our code. Here we can see that the naming of the standard commands and the naming for all commands are different. You have access to both sets of command names, but remember, you must have them matching exactly in order for the IR command to function properly. We have successfully implemented a traditional IR driver in a C-sharp for Crestron program. This allows you to leverage the vast library of IR drivers you have collected and are available online as well as included in the Crestron database library and can package them up in the compiled program package for easy deployment to the processor. Thank you for watching.